So as we ponder the formation of our solar system, how did we get where we are with regard to a sun, four terrestrial planets, four Jovian planets, and the Crumblies, um, some dwarf planets out there? According to the scientific method um, of discovery, we need to kind of gather our observations and come up with a hypothesis. And um, so, for instance, just kind of at a glance again, this, these are, it might be hard for you to see, but we have all of the planets orbiting the sun. And these planets are also shown, their, their, uh, their axis of rotations are shown, and the direction that they're rotating is shown. Also shown right here, these, so these orange paths are the paths of the planets. And notice that the, the planets all orbit in the same direction, which if you're looking down at the north pole, north poles of the planets, that would be counterclockwise. So um, as we put together the pieces, our hypotheses and then ultimately theory will be consistent with what we're observing. So this is just to kind of show you that um, this would be the sun. Actually, the sun is, is also spinning on an axis of rotation counterclockwise, and that um, all of the planets are orbiting the sun counterclockwise, and most of them are spinning counterclockwise on their axis of rotation. So um, we talked in an earlier chapter about um, angular momentum and actually that's gonna, um, uh, basically that if something is rotating, it will continue to rotate unless acted upon by an outside force. Um, it's a type of inertia. So uh, the other thing we need to explain is that we do have two types of planets. We have terrestrial or rocky planets, then we have gaseous or Jovian planets. And like I, was, like I said in an earlier segment for Chapter 6, um, I have read an article recently that, uh, that basically talks about the sun kind of ha as it turned on, and we'll talk about the sun turning on, it basically had a, uh, a, a crazy solar wind that kind of stimulated and, uh, the formation of and relocated the Jovian planets and then it had a second kind of turn on a less energetic solar wind. That's what I read it to say anyway. Another piece to the puzzle um, is those crumblies beyond Neptune's orbit. And actually there's two types of crumblies. There's the Kuiper belt I mentioned here. So Neptune's orbit is blue right there. And so Pluto would be one of these kind of what we say a Kuiper belt object, Pluto and Eris. But there's other icy, rocky th objects out there. And the other type, the other crumblies actually are in a place called the Oort Cloud. And if you thought the Kuiper Belt was far away, then actually the Oort Cloud is even farther. And it's spherical with um, the sun and our solar system in the center of the sphere. So that's the Oort Cloud. So we need to understand why we have those leftovers over there. Also need to explain a few exceptions. One exception is Earth has such a beautiful large moon. And the other exception is that um, I mentioned Uranus, that it if you see it in a picture, it'll show it'll show it like tilt over tilted over a lot, extreme. Um, Uranus's tilt is about 90 degrees. Okay, so it basically lies in the plane of the ecliptic. We need to explain that with our model of the formation of the solar system. So there's the nebular theory. Um, now remember, theory is not just a guess. It's a hypothesis that's been kinged. So I've been talking about this solar nebula um, th from which our sun and all the planets formed. That is kind of kicking off what we call the nebular theory. So we see this happening. One of the things about trying to understand the, um, what's going on with our star, the sun, and, and how our planets came to form, actually we can see in there, and we can see um, in outer space, we can see um, other stars being born and other planets uh, in the process of being born. So uh, back in chapter one, you, you were asked a homework question. What did Carl Sagan mean when he said that we are made of star stuff? 
And if I'd like you to kind of recall your answer to that and then think of what, what I'm presenting here. Galactic recycling. So basically, according to galactic recycling, stars will live their lives, okay, and we'll talk about how stars um, end their lives. And oftentimes, the way they end their lives, they can give their, they can give their, uh, their guts back up to something being born again, okay? So during their lives, they produce heavier and heavier elements, and then if stars die, it depends upon how massive they are, if the star will, as it dies, blow up or not, but um, it will give back, or it can give back its material in the form of a nebula to be used again for the formation of new stars. Okay, so just think about the nebula. This kind of orange, orangish looking thing is actually, think of it as the solar nebula. It's going to form um, the sun and the planets in orbit about the sun. Can you see these little, um, these little blue arrows? That's showing that this blob, which is a nebula, it's going to become our solar system, this blob has some rotation. Now one of the things that we talked about in an earlier chapter is that um, if something has rotation, it has what we call angular momentum. And kind of like, and, and the angular momentum needs to be conserved, just like energy is conserved. And it's very similar to a skater who has her arms or his arms extended. As they bring in their arms, what happens to the rotation? Rotation increases. Okay, so from left to right, what we're seeing is that the cloud is contracting. You see those little red arrows that show it's contracting. And then you see that the blue arrows, we, we have the uh, solar nebula spinning even greater. Um, as the ice skater brings in her arms, she moves faster. So as our uh, solar nebula kind of contracted in on of itself, it's, it, it, um, it rotated more quickly. So not only did it, uh, it started out as kind of a spherical blob, but as it um, not only did it rotate more quickly, but it also flattened out. And it flattens out, um, is flattening out is related to all the little particles kind of colliding in, in forming a disk. So protoplanetary disk. Proto, like if you have a prototype, it's the type before the real thing, okay? So protoplanetary means it's the thing before the planets. And so actually, the way, uh, and we see this happening in other stars, I'll show you some photos here in a minute, but what happened with our solar system is kind of this disk of material um, is going to kind of break up into lanes, and then the lanes are going to break, are going to form within the lanes, um, planets. So evidence of um, this sort of uh, nebular theory in other regions of the universe. Let's see. Let's see if this will work for us. This is Orion. We're going to look at the Orion Nebula close up. All right. So um, the Orion Nebula, I love the constellation Orion. I haven't talked about it yet in the constellation of the week, but it's coming. It's more of a kind of a late fall uh, constellation. But Orion has kind of, uh, I picture him wearing a toga. And so up at his shoulders, we have two stars at his shoulders. We have two stars about his knees. And then we have a uh, belt portion, three stars. And then hanging from the belt, we have a sword. And then within that sword is this Orion Nebula. So I'm going to zoom in. And so this would be actually, these are actually photographs. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And these are baby um, star systems perhaps going to be um, formed here. Oftentimes stars are born in um, clusters and uh, we call that kind of a situation of stellar nursery where we have um, an abundance of our nebula is really large and we can have more than one star being born within the nebula. So I mentioned that um, Let's put both of these up there. These are um, other stars, and we have these protoplanetary disks around these. I shouldn't say stars, sorry. They're star wannabes. 
they're in the process of being born. And there are a lot of stars out there that have planet systems in orbit about them. Um, and here we're kind of catching the process as it's just starting out. As you may know, we do have, um, we have a um, telescope orbiting the Earth called uh, the Kepler telescope. It's called the Kepler, and it is looking just for planets.